right, if you will turn with me to Matthew 21. We're going to take a look at a, a, a thing that happened in history. And we're going to take a look at it in a kind of a different light. You know, if you, if I, when, I, I, when I was growing up, I went through several different organizations, churches, religious organizations. And I was always wondering, is this the right one? Is this the right one? How do you know when you're going to get the right one? How are you going to know when you're right? Are we right? Are they wrong? Are they wrong? Are we right? I, I didn't know. I said, how am I going to know, Father, if I'm in the right place? You know, it's an amazing. Jesus said the word of God cannot be broken. You know how you know you're in the right place? The word of God. The word of God. If the word of God is being preached just like it's written, then you might be in the right place. If you are, if you are not looking at the word of God, uh, you may start, want to start looking for somewhere else. So we are going to look in Matthew 21, and I'm going to begin in verse 1. Interesting occasion here. Interesting and wonderful occasion. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture because I, I, I like to think about things and what they look like when they were occurring. It says, chapter 21, verse 1, And when they drew nigh into Jerusalem, and were come to Bethany, under the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you will find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say the Lord has need of them. And straightway he will send him. And all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye, the daughter of Zion, behold, that king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting on an ass, the colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they sent, set him thereon. And this next part, and a very great multitude, a very great multitude, a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and strewed them in the way. And the multitudes, can you imagine how loud this was? Can you imagine how loud this was? Can you imagine the people all there with their clothes being strewn on the, on the ground and the branches of the palm trees and the multitudes that went before and followed? So they were before Jesus and after cried saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. And when he was come unto Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? We're going to take a look at who this was. I want you to turn with me to Zechariah 9, and we're going to take a look at it in Zechariah. Are you all right, Doyle? I'm um, not. Yeah. Sure. I'm okay, right. you look like you were. All right. Zechariah 9, verse 9. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, and shout, thou daughter of Jerusalem. He said, Behold, thy king cometh. Thy king cometh. He said, he cometh unto thee. He is just in having salvation. He is just in having salvation. You know that word, having salvation, means to conquer. It means to bring salvation. Jesus was bestowing salvation, and he was coming, sitting on a colt. Amen. And it says, lowly, lowly, and riding on an ass, and upon the colt, the foal of an ass, lowly, meek. Let's take a look at that man that was sitting on the donkey. It says he was meek, he was mild, lowly. How could he be lowly? I want you to go to with me to John 1, uh, verse 1. We're going to look at this again. It says, in the beginning, before the world was, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There were two. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Notice, the Word, Jesus, was God. Amen. He was a God. Jesus was a God. He was God. He was with God. And it says the same was in the beginning with God. So there were two gods. Two gods. And it says, all things were made by him. They were made by the word. They were made by the word that was God. They were made by the word that was God. It says, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. How could that be? He was a God. He could create. 
He was a God. He could be everywhere at once. He was a God. He could know everything. He knew everything, and he could create. He was the Word. All things were created by him, and in him was life, and in him was the light of men. And now go down to verse 14. It says, who is this that was on that donkey? Who is this that was on that colt? Verse 14, and the Word, that God, that God that was with God became flesh, was made flesh. Amen. That God that was with God was made flesh, was made flesh. He was made a man. Turn with me to Philippians 2. It says that God that was that God that was with God was made flesh. Philippians 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This is the heart and mind of Jesus, who being in the form of God, he was a God. Jesus was a God. He was with God and he was a God. And he said, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was with the Father. Genesis 1.1, let us make man in our image. Let us Make man in our image. Two gods talking. Amen. Two gods God. talking. Now, who made himself a no, uh, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He emptied himself. That's what those words mean. He emptied Amen. himself and took upon him the form of a servant, meek, lowly, riding on a colt. Meek and lowly, the man, the God, the God, the God that was a God that was with God became a servant, became lowly, became a man, Amen. became a man just like you and I, just like you and I, just like us. Amen. He was a God and he gave it all up. He emptied himself. And the NIV says he became nothing. Became nothing. What was on that colt coming down with the multitudes? But Hosanna in the highest. Our king. Hosanna in the highest to our king. What was he? He was a God that became a man. Amen. That emptied himself of all his godly abilities and became a man. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? You know, Jerusalem didn't even know what was coming. They didn't even know the man that was on the cult. They didn't even know what was going on. But you know what? That man on that cult that was a God, was a God, and became a man, was getting ready to become their sacrifice, our sacrifice. He was getting ready to go to the cross. And they were, entering, they were welcoming into the city. They were welcoming their Messiah. They were welcoming their Savior, and they didn't even know it. And it says he was lowly, sitting on the colt of an ass. It said, and he brought salvation. He was bringing them salvation. The word was to conquer. He was bringing them salvation. He was going to conquer. But he didn't conquer the way they thought he was. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also, likewise, took part of the same. He was a God, Amen. but he became a man. He said, took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death Amen. were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Amen. For verily he took on not him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. He was a God. But he became a man. Amen. And he said, wherefore in all things it behooved him. He thought it necessary to be made like unto us, his Amen. brother. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Amen. He was a God. He was God. He became a man, and that man humbled himself into obedience, became a servant, 
and to obedience, even to the death of the cross. He was a man, a God. He became a man, and he became a man to go to the cross for you. To go to the cross for you. The humility, humility in this God, this God that humbled himself, became a man, and he became a man to go to the cross for you. God can't die. God cannot die, and God cannot take on the sins of a man, but a man can. Do you see that? A God can't die, and a God can't take on the sins of men, but a man can. He was a God, but he became a man to take on your sin and your sickness and your poverty and your safety and your welfare. He did it as a man. He went to the cross as a man. He went to the cross for you. He was the man that took your place on the cross. And he died for you. And he died with your sin. And he died with your sickness. And he died with your prosperity, your, your poverty. He died with your safety in mind. He died for you so that there would be peace between the Father and you. 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 And all you have to do is to go to him and believe.